Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're talking about Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 11 three stars because I have a few examples to show from this last war against North Watchers. Unfortunately, they're on our bases. They're the uh, attacks by North Watchers. So they had some uh, some nice, they had two nice 11 v 11 three stars. So we're gonna break them down, talk about why they worked, the type of base, and then you know how you wanna deploy your troops. Just kind of a very basic guide. I'm not a huge expert in 11 v 11, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of tell you guys why this works, why it's the right base, why it's the right army composition uh, to get the 11 v 11 three star. So that's the focus of this video. Taking a look at this first base, we're gonna show two attacks on it. One that was successful, um, but first the one that was not, the first attack that failed and uh, possibly why it failed. But um, just looking at this base, you can see why it's a great candidate for a Laloon attempt for a three star. Um, has a lot of value right there in the middle. The Infernos, both Infernos and Eagle all right there. That should be a huge um, indicator that you should hit that with Laloon. Uh, the queen is also exposed for a very easy trade. Don't have to worry about using a skelly spell on her. Can just uh, drop the king, let him engage the queen and take her out. Another great re uh, reason to hit this. All expos are on ground. Another reason. And the air defenses are fairly evenly uh, distributed throughout the base. They are cheated towards uh, this top right side here. But um, for the most part, they are you know pretty evenly throughout the base. Um, oftentimes they can be in weird locations, uh, but the way they are, they are right in there tanking uh, wizard towers. So these two wizard towers are going to be tanked by lava hounds, um, which is important. The wizard towers you have to be very, very careful for. They are some of your biggest threats at Town Hall 11. Pretty much at any Town Hall level when you're trying La Loon, the wizard towers can take out those big group of, of loons um, very easily. So you got to be careful, especially with the help of infernos and red air bombs, other stuff that does multiple damage or does damage to multiple balloons at once so let's take a look at this first replay here and uh, just kind of talk about it um, it's gonna be a king trade just wall breaks the king in lets him come in and uh, take out the queen right here so just a nice trade there that's pretty much always getting is just the defensive queen um, but that's a trade you're gonna want to take most of the time the king for the queen um, now he gets a partial CC lure it looks like which isn't uh, isn't that helpful because it's a bunch of goblins which otherwise wouldn't come out but not really a big deal the queen steps up just trades her for like basically just a wizard tower but that's important for the funneling because he wants his loons to go from the top of the base down towards the core the wizard tower also a very valuable building especially one that's not being tanked by any air defenses nearby so you know it's going to be targeting balloons there's probably some red air bombs so it's actually a very important building even though it's just one building for the queen to take out or one defense that is it's still important so we'll go ahead and keep going with the attack here um in come the lava hounds the loons from all directions but you'll notice that it's a very uneven um, pathing through the base. They basically skip that top air defense and they have to um, go back to it a little while later. They get pushed back into it. I think actually some lava pups take it out. Um, but the main story of this is don't be deceived by all these indicators that it's a good base for La Loon. You still have to go very, very heavy at the beginning with your spells, with your balloons. You have to go very heavy on the deployment because there's so much in that core. He went a little too sparse. He um, spread the loons a little bit too much. And as a result, he did not get um, all the way through the base here. The warden also only got a few loons in his eternal tomb. You want that warden to get right in the middle of everything so he's affecting as many troops as possible when you pop his eternal tomb. I go ahead and fast forward as this thing winds down. It's not going to be a, a successful attack, obviously. Just a high percentage one star. Actually, he might get the two star here. Um, that's actually kind of funny. The warden will take out that town hall, I think. So this one will be a two star. It just takes forever for him to get that town hall. The warden, even at level 20, doesn't do much damage. Uh, so he takes out the town hall. Oh, no, I guess he doesn't. So it's still a one star, um, but uh, it laid the groundwork for the next one, which was successful. And let's talk about why it worked over the first one. Um, going to uh, have pretty much the same troops here. 
and he will drop down the king. Uh, notice no wall breakers, though. I think he just realized that there's not a whole lot of value to be gotten after the queen goes down. It's just a bunch of storages, and all that's going to happen is it's going to lure out the CC, which isn't even ideal. So just allows the king to swing through the wall, saves the troop space, because he still can easily take out the queen, even after having to go through one layer of walls. Um, drops the queen in the same location, gets that same wizard tower, which we talked about, so important. Also gets the cannon as well, uh, which will help with funneling. Uh, there are two Teslas there, but the Wizard Tower is the important building because it does that splash damage. Now he just goes ahead and drops in a few loons at the beginning to get um, the uh, two buildings there, uh, the Mortar being the second one. He's basically going to kind of come in a clockwise fashion around the uh, the en entry point of this base from 12 o'clock up there to 9 o'clock there. And he's going to keep the warden very close to these loons and get as many loons as possible in that warden's tomb. So Lava Hounds come in. He's coming in very heavy um, on the left side of the base first and going to propel everything into the core. He needs as many balloons as possible. And right there, that eternal tomb getting so many loons. Um, but the important thing is he has a bunch of balloons in the core and he's going to keep those raged up throughout the entire core. Now you want to use the... Uh, eternal tomb with the rage because that combination is so deadly you have about two to three seconds of invincible balloons under rage moving through a base by the time that the tomb wears off they basically have taken out the entire core has that back end heal um, to deal with um, the last few defenses as they get targeted or as the loons get targeted by those last few defenses the baby dragon and the, the cc actually does not go down so it runs over locks onto the warden a little bit uh, scary stuff there. I guess that baby dragon potentially could have spoiled this attack here, but I believe what's going to end up happening is the lava hound's going to explode. I think that's how the... Uh, maybe not. We'll go ahead and fast forward. The baby dragon is just going to be up that entire attack, it seems like. Uh, but there's the loons kind of split here. They're taking out different buildings. He has quite a few minions. Right there, rages up those pups so they can take out the baby dragon. And this one is GG. So you notice the difference is just being heavier at the beginning. That's one of the most important things with the La Loon. Come in heavy. Get the warden in there with that first group. That way he'll move into the base quicker. And he'll affect more balloons with his eternal tomb. And uh, funnel everything towards the core. The core, the core, the core. Get those important buildings taken out. Um, it's not as much finesse as a 10v10. It's basically just overpowering the base. Now, those two attacks um, were on our number six. Let's take a look at one more here. This is going to be on um, our number three here. Like I said, North Watchers had, some, had uh, two nice 11v11s. And that was one of the difference makers. A good war to them. Preseason CWL. Just doing this for uh, the seeding, I think, to decide who's in what group for the actual season. But um, these wars, still a good good practice for both sides in getting to see kind of how things are going to shape up during the season. So this space, you know, I'm having a little bit of trouble when I was watching this originally. I couldn't quite decide, you know, why is this a good base for hogs? I think some of the important um, notes are that the defenses are very evenly spread around the base. You have no areas that are very high in defenses, none that are basically um, devoid of defenses. They pretty much all have an even amount of defenses, it's a very nice spread. So you know the hog pathing is going to be a nice wave across the base, which is what you want in a mass hog attack. Um, if you are a Town Hall 10 and you're watching this, you can check out my Town Hall 10 video on mass hogs with the skelly spells. I made one just for Town Hall 10 a few vids back, uh, so check that one out. Um, but basically, with the kill squad here, he's going to come in grab just the CC, some defensive buildings, just get that minimal value he needs in order to be able to send in the hogs. Not even going for the queen, just because it's on the opposite side of the clan castle, and the CC is more important than the queen for sure. Gotta get the baby dragon witch, it's just too much. The hogs are too flimsy. Um, you can get away with it on Laloon attacks if you poison the CC as it comes out, but for hog attacks, you cannot um, afford to have the CC running around targeting your hogs in most cases. So gets that taken out, gets a few defenses as well, then comes in over on the opposite side of the base here, just a wall of hogs. He cheats the warden over to the side that the queen is on because he's going to use that eternal tomb 
on the hogs that are being targeted by the queen side, which is a very good choice, um, especially with the single inferno, which actually does more damage to the hogs. Also, notice how he he uses the tomb over a giant bomb. Another great place, as soon as that giant bomb appears, uh, pops the tomb, the hogs won't take any damage from it, but he's not going to unnecessarily heal the hogs while they have the effect of the eternal tomb because it's overkill. The hogs aren't going to take any damage anyway. He saves the heal until after they get out of the eternal tomb, after they take about uh, you know a third of their HP and damage, then he drops that heal to get them back up. But he's not too early on the heals, which is very important. He heals the other side quicker because they're taking damage from giant bombs, multi-infernos, other defenses, and they don't have the benefit of the eternal tomb. You might have noticed the skelly spells he dropped in all the chaos. I think he got a nice little play there with the eternal tomb affecting some of the skeletons as well, which helped them overwhelm the queen. But two skelly spells will take out pretty much any queen. You just gotta be patient, and he was. The queen did take out maybe a couple hogs, but that's very, very small compared to like the 50 hogs he had. So be patient. Let the hogs get to about equal level with the queen. As they're moving past, that's when you drop the skelly spell. And uh, that is how you take out the queen. That way the defenses are focused on the hogs and the skeletons do the work. Um, basically as the hogs move past, so they only target the queen and they don't get taken out by anything else. So a great um, attack here by Exit. I wish I could make a video showing some of our attacks, but unfortunately didn't have any 11v11s to show. We had one attempt, but the queen died during a queen walk. Otherwise, I think it had a good chance uh, the plan did of working on that base. So thank you guys for watching. Hope this video helped for those of you Town Hall 11s or any Town Hall really who wants to see some awesome uh, Town Hall 11 attacks because, you know, someday you might be in this position trying out some of these strategies against Town Hall 11s and it's good to get an idea of how things are working at this top level. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what do you guys think of the possibility of more 11 v 11 three stars, um, especially these spam attacks. People tend to get a little bit nervous about spam attacks, but um, we're not seeing them too much here, just some of the very top clans pulling these off. Otherwise, it's mostly 11s still dipping down in Town Hall 10s. So um, that's how it's looking right now, but I will be sure to keep you guys updated which, with uh, what's going on, if more Town Hall 11 3 stars happen, um, how things are looking in CWL, all that stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.